soundproofing, or sound isolation, is mostly accomplished with solid barriers. However, what's practically just as important as the construction of the barrier is the construction of the wall, ceiling, or floor taken as a whole unit. Take this as an example. Solid masonry walls have similar overall sound isolation ratings compared to stud-framed walls with open stud bays. These walls differ in specifically what frequencies they block best, but the overall similar performance in spite of the stud wall's lack of mass is due to a chink in the armor of a solid wall. These vibrations are created at one side of the wall, they easily travel across to the other side. In other words, solid walls always vibrate as one solid unit. Because of the open stud bays, a stud wall allows the two sides of the wall, each side referred to as a leaf, to be disconnected across the majority of their surf surfaces, lessening the structural resonance. When a solid material vibrates, it creates sm small waves that ripple through the air, which we call sound. So then, if we want to increase the soundproofing ability of the structure, we have to cut the paths that the vibration would otherwise be able to travel through, these paths being the structural members of the wall. This practice is called decoupling, and it's very important for a quality soundproofing job. Decoupling the wall forces sound to have to move more or less through the air cavity rather than the stud or joist. Though the air cavity divides the wall into two separate masses called leaves, which allow for two separate chances for the wall to deflect the same sound wave, the walls will not have double the sound isolation, even if they are decoupled as much as possible. This is because repeated waves vibrating through the first wall leaf will impact waves which have been deflected back from the second wall leaf, often creating a series of larger waves called harmonics, or standing waves. The largest of these waves ultimately forms the fundamental resonance frequency of the wall as a whole, and this resonance exists apart from the fundamental of the solid material of the individual wall leaves, as mentioned in the first video. The resonance of this wall as a whole is still very much audible, and is referred to as the low frequency resonance. Below this resonance, the wall essentially vibrates as though it were a single solid mass, rendering any decoupling useless at that point. As such, for the decoupling to be as useful as possible, we want to push the low frequency resonance as low in frequency as we can. There are various products here and there that are said to decouple, such as Soundboard, sold under names like Homosote. Soundboard has shown to be terrible, to be blunt. It's too light to add any good amount of mass, and it's not flexible enough to decouple. A good product called Resilient Channel, specifically R1 Channel, has been used in soundproofing for quite a long time as a decoupler. The channel is made of very thin, flexible material, and by attaching it perpendicular to the studs, then attaching the wall board only to the channel, the channel acts as a flexible buffer or shock absorber. This not only decouples, but it also allows the wallboard to have more give. This give in the wallboard drops the low frequency resonance even lower by allowing the air in the cavity to expand and contract more freely. The main trade-off with Resilient Channel is that it can be difficult to install the wallboard correctly. You have to be careful how far apart the channels are mounted, and people will often accidentally zip a screw through the wallboard through the channel and into a stud or joist which ruins the decoupling. Another option which is less problematic is the use of metal hat channel which is mounted on shock absorbing clips which are mounted onto the stud and or joist. The clips are specialized for soundproofing purposes so you'll need to go to a soundproofing place or order them. They're usually about five bucks or so. The hat channel will vary in price depending on where you get it and if I'm not mistaken, it's best at around 25 gauge in thickness. Thinner than that, and it won't support as well. Thicker than that, and it won't allow the wall to have much give. This is more expensive than just using Resilient Channel, however, it is more effective at decoupling. 